Hello, Wednesday the 8th of April and we're in the middle of Holy Week. There are a number of accounts of what happened in the week leading up, in Holy Week, leading up to Good Friday, Jesus' crucifixion and the resurrection on Easter Sunday. And I'm going to uh, just spend a bit of time reflecting on one of those accounts and that's the account of Jesus being anointed in Bethany that happened to him during Holy Week. That account is mentioned in three of the Gospels. We're going to read the account in a minute from Matthew, but it's also mentioned in Mark chapter 14 and in John chapter 12. John chapter 12 is the only account where the person, the woman who came and anointed Jesus is named and she's named as Mary, sister of Martha and Lazarus. If you know the story, um, or if you don't, let me just quickly tell you the story of this family, two sisters and a brother, Mary, Martha and Lazarus. They were a family that were very close to Jesus through his ministry, and Jesus used to spend time at their house. But they were especially close to Jesus because just before the account of, of Mary coming and anointing Jesus in John chapter 12, in John chapter 11 is the account of the death of Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus. Lazarus became very ill and Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus that he was ill, please would he come and, and pray over their brother. By the time Jesus arrives Lazarus has already died from this illness and the story was Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus and we know the story well, prayed over him and Lazarus was raised from the dead. And so this is a family who were close to Jesus anyway, but especially thankful to Jesus because their brother was restored to them. And that was John chapter 11. In John chapter 12, Jesus is preparing and, and there's a sense that there's something going on. And actually this is his, his last week before his crucifixion. And clearly Mary sends something and she feels she needs to respond in some way. And that's where she goes and anoints Jesus with this perfume. And this was an extremely expensive perfume. It was probably the family nest egg. It was probably their security for the future. But Mary felt she needed to do something to say, Jesus, you are worth everything to me. And so let's read the story from Matthew. And it's Matthew chapter 26 and beginning at verse 6. While Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. I came across a, a, a script called Mary's Monologue that I've now printed out. Um, it, it's a, a script that I think I did come across many years ago, but I'd, I'd forgotten all about. And I've just recently come across again. And I just wanted to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it under the camera here. And I'm going to just read it to you. And it's a monologue of, of Mary accounting the events that happened. Mary's monologue. Let me read it to you. It was just an impulse, something I felt I had to do. All I could think of is that he deserved the best. And if I didn't do it then, I might always regret it. And I'm glad I did it, because though he had been in our house and our town lots of times, this ended up being the last time he was in Bethany. So there wasn't going to be another chance to express to him how much I appreciate him. 
You see, it was like this. We were still so joyful that Lazarus, Lazarus was alive again at Jesus' command. We love Jesus for what he has done and has meant to our family. But it was more than what he did. It was what he said too. Just before he raised my brother Lazarus from the dead, he looked my sister Martha right in the eye and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We really started to think about what he was saying. Because more and more, he had also started talking about how he would have to die for the sins of the world and then be raised again three days later. The more time went on, the more he seemed to have the weight of the world on his shoulders. But the more I listened to him, the more the light in my mind was switching on. I didn't fully understand it then, of course, but it was clear. He was declaring his purpose in death was to cleanse the likes of me from all my failures so that through his death I could be made right with God. The way to God's eternal presence was being opened up to me by what he was so determinedly heading for. And the more I thought about it and watched this man, the more my heart softened. I just wanted to do something that expressed to him, I think I understand something of what you're saying and I want to say thank you. But thank you seemed so inadequate. Here was this man giving his all in order to give the likes of me life. I just had to do something that expressed, you are more precious to me than anything else in the world. To be honest, I didn't think long and hard about it. I just knew the way he was talking, his death was imminent. I had this feeling in my stomach that this might be the last time he is in our town. How could I express my gratitude? Well, I saw the jar of perfume, which I kept as a security so that I wouldn't have to worry about going without. And it came to me there and then. What Jesus is talking about, he is offering me far more than a bit of financial security. And, and call me crazy, but on the spur of the moment, I just wanted to rush round to that house where they were eating and pour it on him. As a kind of declaration that what he was doing for me meant far more to me than anything I might have in this world even the most expensive thing. And you might think that as soon as I did it, I regretted it and thought that was silly Mary. You shouldn't have wasted it like that. But there wasn't a bit of feeling like that. As soon as I did it, I knew I'd done the right thing. Jesus means everything to me. Nothing else can compare in value to that. But what a reaction it caused. Everyone in the room gasped and then they started grumbling. Do you know how much that was worth? That was a year's worth of wages and she could have sold that and given it to the poor. Well they were all expecting Jesus to declare how right they were and for him to give me a row for doing this. But Jesus just sat there still and it was one of the moments when he looks at you and it remains with you forever. He looked at me and it wasn't the eyes of anger that looked at me. It was the eyes of compassion, appreciation and understanding that looked back at me. Then he turned his gaze to the disciples in the room and rather than agreeing with them, he surprised them. He said, why are you bothering this woman? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. 
but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. And there it was again. He was talking about his death again. Do I have any regrets? No. Should I have used something cheaper rather than pouring out my nest egg? No. What else can you do for someone who has sacrificed himself to give you life? There can be no holding back. Let me pray. Lord, this is a time when our senses are heightened by the fragility of life. But it's also a time when our senses are heightened by the value we place on our lives. Lord, as we reflect on this, take us to a place where we're reminded of the value that you place on our lives. Thinking of Peter who told us, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring us to God. You came from the glory of heaven to the mess of this world. You came to live among us. You came to be the perfect one among us. And then to die for us in order that your perfect righteousness be ours. And our imperfect sinfulness be taken on by you. And also that we might not just have life on this earth, but that we might have a sure and certain hope for all eternity in your wonderfully exhilarating presence forevermore. You sacrificed yourself in order to give us a home with you forever. Lord, what is all that worth? It's worth infinitely more than our all. But our all is all that we can give you. And we give it gladly. Amen. Thank you. May you continue to have a blessed Holy Week. The next video message will be at 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday morning. But before that, we have an opportunity as a church family to meet together online at 10.30 and we will share Easter Sunday communion together. And I really look forward to that with you on Resurrection Sunday. God bless you. Goodbye.